One of the interesting things about hypothesis tests, like most things in stats, is that it's very rare to know if you are right. However, there's a couple different ways that you can be wrong with a hypothesis test. So we're going to take a look at what those different ways Imagine this circle here is a population of a bunch of different uh, numbers here. And we are going to be going out and taking a sample of these to see if we can prove our null and alternative hypothesis. Now these symbols here, H0 and HA, is just shorthand for the null hypothesis and the alternative. So if you ever see those, that's what they're referring to. And our alpha value, we decide, is going to be 0.05. That's how much evidence we need to be convinced that we can reject the null hypothesis. So I go out and I go randomly sampling, and I end up with a negative 2, a negative 1, and the 0 here. So let's say that was my three things I picked in an SRS. If I take those three things, add them together, negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3, plus 0 and negative 3, divide by 3, I get a sample average of negative 1. So my sample average is negative 1. But I'm going to take these three values, I throw them into stat key, and I am going to see if I can uh, find out how likely my null hypothesis is to be true given this data and I type it in, my null is 0, and I set my negative 1 down here, and I get a p-value of 0 0.039. And 0 0.039 is, in fact, less than 0 0.05. So that is good. I get to reject. That's what I don't usually want to do. Question of whether we reject or not? Yes, we do reject the null. We are thinking the null is not true. Now in this little example, uh, we have the handy privilege of being able to check our work. The actual mu here, if we add these up, is 0. 0 plus 1, 2, 3, back to 1, negative 1, negative 2, 0, uh-oh. 0 divided by 9 is 0. So our actual average of all the numbers in the population was 0. So that means that we did it wrong. When we reject, and we were not supposed to reject, the null was true, but we rejected anyways, that's called a type 1 error. There's going to be a type 1 and, surprise, a type 2 coming up soon. But let's start out with the type 1. When you reject the null, but the null was in fact correct. If you think back to our example of the courtroom situation, it's like convicting someone but they're actually innocent. So the null hypothesis that uh, you're innocent until proven guilty, that was a mistake. Somebody convicted someone when the null, the innocent person, was true. The probability of doing this, you can actually know the probability that a type 1 error is going to happen, is whatever you have as your alpha value, such as, let's say, 0.05. Now the places where this comes up, you think, well, it's easier to reject the null if I just make my alpha value higher, because then my p-value can just sneak under. That's true, but you have a higher chance of accidentally convicting the innocent person, of making some kind of type 1 error. So there is a cost to making alpha too high, even though rejecting is generally good. Now let's look at a similar situation here. We have a different population of numbers, but we have the same null and alternative hypothesis that mu is equal to 0 or mu is less than 0, and the same alpha value of 0.05. So let's say I do my random selection and I select a 1, a negative 1, and a negative 3 uh, as part of my sample, my SRS. If I take those values and I put them into stat key and I have the null hypothesis of 0, this is what I end up with. I end up with uh, this graph and the values less than my null hypothesis have a p-value of 0.337. Now 0.337 is super high, so I am not going to reject with a value of 0.337. So I will fail to reject the null. When we say do we reject it? No, we do not reject it. However, what is the actual average of these numbers? As you can see, uh, almost all of them are negative. So the actual mu is negative 
that means that we made a mistake. We said, well, the null is probably fine. We don't have enough evidence to reject it, but we really should have rejected it. That's called a type 2 error. The most famous case of type 2 errors would be probably O.J. Simpson letting an innocent person go, uh, or sorry, letting a guilty person go, someone who almost certainly can committed the crime but uh, gets off, that would be a form of type 2 error. It's accepting the null hypothesis, letting it be, when in fact the null hypothesis was wrong. And in the same way that alpha is the probability of a type 1 error, uh, we have beta as the probability of a type 2 error. Calculating this, it can be done, uh, but it involves a lot of extra other information and gets a little bit complicated, so we are not going to go into how to find beta. So let's review this in a couple different ways. Here's your situation. Let's say that the null is true. And now let's look at what we did. If the null hypothesis is true and we fail to reject it, well then we did the right thing. You should not reject a true thing. So good job us. However, if the null hypothesis is true and we reject that true thing, well then we made a mistake. We made a type 1 error. The other case is that the null hypothesis is false. That means we're assuming that the alternative is true. If we fail to reject the null, but it was false, well then we made a mistake. That's a type 2 error. And if the null hypothesis is false, the alternative is true, and we reject that false null, well good for us. We did it right. So in each of these situations, if it's true, we should fail to reject. If it's false, we should reject. And otherwise, we have either a type 1 or type 2 error. The simplest graphical way to understand this that I've seen is uh, this little diagram here. Type 1 error, uh, the guy here is telling this man that you are pregnant. In this case, the null hypothesis is that you are not pregnant. The doctor rejected the null to say that you are pregnant, and this guy is like, mm, probably not. So that's clearly a type 1 error. Over here, a type 2 error would be saying, hey, I uh, failed to reject. I don't think that you are pregnant. Well, unless that's a watermelon under your shirt, I'm not real convinced about that. So type 1 error, uh, you reject but you shouldn't. Type 2 error, you fail to reject when you should have. Last way is just looking at a simple little grid here. Uh, if the null is true you, and you reject, then you made a mistake, type 1 error. If the alternative is true and you accept it, you fail to reject it, then you made a type 2 error. Otherwise, you did the right thing. So some quick examples. I did a study at the significance level of alpha is 0.01. So this is uh, lower than 0.05. My p-value was 0 0.008. So even though alpha was low, we still were able to reject. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I know that I am rejecting the null. Despite this very low p-value, my null hypothesis later turned out to be correct. Whoa, so even though you rejected it, it turned out that the null was a true statement. So is there an error, and if so, what type? Yes, there is an error, and that would be when you reject and you shouldn't have, that is type 1. Now, let's say you did a s study at significance level of 0.05, the standard alpha. My p-value is 0.08. So 0.08 means you do not reject because it is higher than alpha. So we're going to say uh, that we did not reject. We accepted the null. My null hypothesis was, in fact, correct. So the null was true, and you did not reject it. Therefore, you did the right thing. Good for you. I did a study at significance level. Alpha is 0.05. P-value was 0.06. Thus, I did not reject my null, but I later found out that my null was incorrect. So the null was not correct. The alternative was, in fact, true. Uh, 
but you failed to reject. You accepted the null when it was not true. That means that you made a mistake. You made a type 2 error. Uh, one couple more examples. I did a new study on the same topic as the last one, but this time I cleverly chose to use the significance level. Alpha is 0 0.10. So I raised my alpha. I lowered my standards. My p-value was again 0 0.06. So this time I got to reject. So I got to reject the null hypothesis. And later found out the null was in fact correct. So the alternative was true. So in that case, I didn't make an error. Now this might seem a little frustrating. Here with a 0 0.05, you made a type 2 error. And here with a 0 0.10, you actually did the right thing. Does that mean you should always make your alpha level higher? No, absolutely not. It increases your chance of a type 1 error if you make your alpha level higher. So it's kind of a trade-off that you're working with. And then last example. Did a study at the significance level alpha is 0.01. My p-value was 0 0.10. Therefore, I did not reject the null. Alpha, or p-value was too high, so I did not reject. Um, and found out that my null hypothesis was in fact correct. If you accept the null and it turns out to be true, you did the right thing, so there is no error. Here's an interesting situation, um, a little different than the courtroom example. Let's say that the null hypothesis is that the patient is healthy, and the alternative is that the patient has some sort of disease. So let's say you have some sort of medical test, and you're going to test uh, reject the null if they have a disease. A type 1 error, if you reject the null when the null is in fact true, that means you are telling someone who is healthy that they have a disease. Well, that's not a good thing to do. We call that a false positive uh, in most medical situations. The alternative, though, is actually a lot worse when you fail to reject and the null is false. So let's say the alternative is true. The patient has a disease and you make a mistake. You tell them they're healthy. So telling that diseased patient that they are healthy, a false negative, in this case, is far worse. The first one is bad. It's going to give the family some stress. It's probably cost insurance and maybe even the family a lot of money to go through extra testing. That's not a good thing. But telling someone who has some kind of disease that they're healthy, they're going to go home, think they're fine, and all of a sudden be in the hospital with some pretty severe symptoms a few days, maybe a few weeks later. This type 2 error in this case is far worse. So it's not always type 1 being worse or type 2 being worse. It really depends on how you set up the problem. So you have to be very careful about that every time. Going through, just looking at that in that tree diagram again, uh, if the null is true, if you are healthy and you tell the patient you're healthy, they did the right thing. If the patient is healthy and you tell them that you have a disease, kind of bad. In this case, that's the type 1 error. If the patient truly does have a disease, if the null is false, they are not healthy, and you tell them that they have a disease, it's not a good thing that they have a disease, but at least you told them the right thing so they can start a treatment. Uh, if the null is false, they have a disease, and you tell them that they're healthy, you made a type 2 error um, based on the way this problem is set up and that means that somebody uh, might have this severe disease and go undetected for a long time.